So, welcome to our second installment in the use of Insight for medical data analysis. In this tutorial, we're going to go through and show you how to import in the Nifty or Analyze format. We'll then look at component mapping to interrogate two different quantities at once. We'll be using the texture mapping function inside Insight to do this. And finally, we'll look at using ISO services to define structures of interest and areas of interest. We'll start off here by looking at the uh, import data format. We have a Nifty uh, data format here, the HDR and IMG file. We can read these directly into Insight. So we'll close this down and file open. We can select the HDR and set set file. Because the HDR file has a unique uh, suffix, uh, it picks up and automatically recognizes as the Nifty analyzed format. You can simply select load all. In this data set, we have uh, two different um, sets of information. We have an MRI scan that was spatially registered with a PET scan. We Offline, we pre-aligned this process and fine-tuned it with the air package from UCLA. So this data set has both structural information in the form of MRI and functional information in the form of PET. This uh, uh, data sets exist for each element of the mesh. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll uh, just select the, the data set here, the volume, and we'll show you what we can do here with creating some variables. We'll do this uh, process up front. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, transfer the elemental data to nodal data. So you can do this very easily by selecting the predefined functions, element to node. Here we'll call this uh, MRI. So we now have selected the um, the part in our part list here. So we'll say next. We'll then select the variable and we'll use volume zero. So we have two different variables in our domain, volume one and volume two. Vo sorry, volume zero and volume one. Uh, volume one uh, registers to the MRI. So do the same thing. Element to node. We'll call this the pet. And this is the volume one data. Okay, now we have these two additional variables here. We've really just renamed these uh, from the volume zero and volume one variables that were located in the file. The next thing we'll do is we'll prepare some uh, variables here for use in the texture uh, mapping process. We're going to want to create a variable called S, uh, and that will basically just normalize the MRI minus 1 over 255.0. So we're just going to normalize this uh, over the range from 0 to 255. We'll do the same thing for the T value and we'll base that off for the PET divided by 255.0. You'll see later on that we'll use the S and T variables when we're mapping uh, across for the component mapping in the texture functions. Okay, so the first thing we'll do here, we now have some variables created. We'll create a section cut. So we'll do a clip plane using our part. Use a uh, IJK here. We have structured data. Use IJK, the K value. You can see here we have the min and max uh, values. So if we stick in a value of 64, we'll be approximately in the middle of the domain. Okay. So the first thing we can do, we can look at coloring this with the pet value. So here we have the, the PET value. We could also call it with the MRI value. So here we have the MRI uh, value that goes from 0 to 199. Now what we're going to do here is that we'd really like to look at both the MRI and the PET values at the same time. So we're going to use the texture mapping function inside Insight. So to do this with the part selected, we'll go to Edit Textures. We'll right click to load a texture in and we'll select the HSV gradient. So in this instance we're going to be mapping the color uh, T uh, to the PET value and the S which is the value uh, we'll, go, we'll map to the MRI. In this instance the HSV H is the value and T is the hue. So we'll use for this part texture 1. We'll clamp it onto the domain. A linear, we'll do a nearest interpolation. And instead of projection, we'll use variables. 
once we have the variables turned on we can choose the s variable here's a list of all the uh, available variables for us so we choose s here and t here so what we've done now is that we are now looking at the color as the pet value and the mri as the intensity so here we can look at two different variables at the same time on the same single sheet of paper. We're looking at both, interrogating both the intensity as well as the color. You can normalize these values uh, differently depending upon your domain structure. As you saw, we normalize them to 255. Depending upon your data sets, you can normalize and, and isolate different regions of interest using this technique here and a standard uh, color function here. So with the uh, dual uh, texture mapping, uh, being able to map the S and the T variables uh, to different variables within our field domain, we've been able to look at two different quantities at the same time. This allows you to both examine the MRI structures while simultaneously interpreting, interpreting the functional values in the PET. From here we'll go back to the registered image and we'll select an isosurface. This time we'll select the isosurface based off the MRI and some mid-range value. So now we've created some mid-range value based on the MRI. So what we're looking here is an MRI uh, data set uh, surface. But we can now use this and color this with the PET value. So here we're able to map the PET value onto the isosurface and we can again interrogate an isosurface of the MRI while looking at the value of the PET on that particular value. And again we can, we can turn in any of the individual components that we've created on or off uh, in our domain. So we'll turn this guy off here as well. So in this instance we can also look at uh, one thing that which is quite helpful is to use the clip plane here. We'll make this, uh, we'll turn this value back on and this value back off. So we move our clip plane out of our region of interest here. Now what we can do here is we can uh, arbitrarily place this plane wherever we'd like. We can also control its center and normal values. But what I'm going to do now is go up to tools sorry, view and do auxiliary clippling. In this instance now, as I move this plane around, I'm actually able to interrogate details inside my domain. Now I turn my sweep surface back on, and that's also cut. But I can go down here and specify that I don't want this value to be cut by that clipping plane. So here I can look at taking my plane through my domain dynamically through my ISO surface while leaving my, my section cut unchanged or vice versa I could cut my section cut leaving the ISO surface uh, contained as it is. This allows you to interrogate the, the inside of our ISO surface maybe look at some other detail which is hidden from the outside view while still looking at the values on this section cut. So in this uh, tutorial we've gone through and shown you how to load the nifty data format We've gone through and shown you a section cut, been able to allocate both variables using the texture mapping function inside Insight to look at both intensity and color. And we've also looked at isosurfaces, uh, looking at an isosurface of MRI colored with the PET value.